Yeah. Early days. One NBL dunk. Gold Coast. In Adelaide, right? Nah, yeah, on the Gold Coast against Wollongong. Tim Con Tim Conrad. On his head. He was late in contesting it, but he contested it. There's a photo where he's actually there, and I'm done. <laughs> Ever since I can remember, I've been around the NBL. So dad was the CEO of the West Sydney Razorbacks. So he started them when I was about six or seven years old. And so pretty much from that day on, I'd been around NBL programs, like my school holidays, I'd go to training. That's what I used to do. So I'd go to training, watch the Razorbacks train, then go back to the office and dad would take me home. And so kind of, since I remember, I've just been around NBL teams and programs. And so obviously being around that, from a young age made me basically all I want to do was play in the NBL and so fast forwarding to being 17 I think I maybe just turned 18 having to make a decision whether I wanted to go to college go to the NBL what was I doing it was kind of a hard decision but it wasn't because I always wanted to play in the NBL and so I made that decision and then fast forward to now and yeah it's kind of surreal to say that I'm playing 350 games when you really think about the amount of games like when I really think about it it's it's pretty cool. Here on your own with the 80 Jason. <laughs> it's funny when I think back, like the decision to play for the Gold Coast was the, it ended up being probably the best decision I ever made because of how they treated me. When Like when the accident happened, they could have easily cut all ties and said, we'll just go on the other way, but they looked after me. They flew in to see me when I was basically just got out of hospital. They let me stay at home as long as possible till I was ready to move. And then they kind of just, the people that had involved, uh, a guy named Will Markwick, who was the Australia, uh, was the strength conditioning coach who was involved with Acceleration, who we're involved with now. He was excellent, the physios were excellent. And it, it just kind of, being at the Gold Coast, I guess they looked after me so well that it helped me just move forward in my career. And I guess to the point of saying 350 games now, I guess the one thing that kind of always hits me is I almost didn't get to play any games. So to fast forward to this is it makes it a little bit more special knowing that it almost was over before it started. You go back to like, I remember my first ever game. After that accident, we played Townsville, which I think both of our assistant coaches might have been playing in. but. We played Townsville and after the game, I couldn't walk. Like I actually got help to the car to go home because my hips are just locked up. But there was the first ever game, uh, kind of my first ever grand final series with Adelaide. Um, I remember running out in our first game there and it had been a period where Adelaide had struggled for a number of years. And then that first game we ran out to play Perth and it was like people were actually hanging from the rafters. It was wild. So there's just different experiences like that. Um, even being able to play at Kudos Bank Arena uh, where the Kings play now, I dreamt when I was younger of playing in that stadium. So when Sydney moved there, it was like dream come true playing out of that arena. And so there's just moments like that. And then I guess it's the people, right? Like for me, it's the people along the way that I've got to play alongside or just get to know. I think that's kind of the thing right now without winning a title that will obviously go in there if I could get one, like one of those. But just the people I've been around has, has definitely played the biggest part in my career. Wait. Jace is a teammate. Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is his leadership. Um, man has been a leader in this league for a long time. I think that's just a huge testament to his character. I've never met a team or a person on a team who's played with Jace that hasn't liked him. So I think that's just a credit to his character and his uh, personality. I mean, he's the best teammate I've played with. He really does whatever he can for everyone else and then puts himself next in line after that if um but yeah great teammate um and then even better friend as well Second in the competition coming into tonight for that stat Sobi after the find from jason kadee i uh, know it's awesome to be able to be on the court with him and share this moment you know i've watched a lot of his games over his career and uh it's gonna be fun going out there and just you know it's a credit to his longevity it's a credit to what he brings to teams year in year out and 
Uh, we've, we've seen it early on in the season as well. You know, he's, he's been able to change a few looks for us and then just gets out there and does what's needed for the team. An experience tonight. Speaking of experience, today he plays his 350th next week. What a st Oh my goodness, Jason Kadeem. Basketball is still very much my entire life, but I have this whole other life now with Jazz and the kids. Um, but, but it's hard because basketball is all I've ever known. So I guess to sit there now, um, I go back to like my first. So Anthony Petrie, who coaches me on the Gold Coast, uh, is my best mate. And so when I was coming off my injury, Peach had just torn his Achilles in the first few games of Gold Coast season. So I would go to his house three times a week. And I'd still go to his house almost three times a week. So he's never got rid of me. And this was 12, 13 years ago. But He's, uh, Jess was four, his eldest, and Emma was two. And I got to see them at games run up to me and say hi, and Stephen Hall had kids and Mark Worthington, and all those kids would run up to me after the game and want to hold my hand and walk around, or they'd run up to their dad and walk around. And I always, forever in a day, have thought that's the coolest thing ever, forever. And then we go to Adelaide, Pete, same thing. And then he had his next, uh, Holly had come along and she got older. And there was a moment we lost, um, we lost in grand the grand final of Perth, game three. And Holly, me and Peach had organized Peach's wife to fly to Perth to watch the game because she wasn't going to come. We thought if we win, she's got to be there. And then so Holly had somehow after the game, we lose. And next minute I feel someone grab my hand and she's about two, two and a half. Holly's walked on and she's holding my hand. And she's looked up and waved at me. And here I am devastated. We just lost. And just it was a moment of like, Obviously, I was really close to the family, but I was like, she has no care in the world what's going on right now. Like, there's people getting medals and whatever, and she's just walked on to say, hi, Jace, pick me up. So now to have my version of that and have Louis and Scarlett, and especially Louis, loves basketball, wants to go watch dad play, wants to run around with kids. I just think of almost how I grew up, and I loved my childhood at basketball stadiums, around other kids that love basketball, Got to see dad at Masters. I didn't see him play, but dad at Masters or dad playing at local stuff and then to be at NBL games. It just, I just, you're trying to give your kids the best environment possible. And I just felt like basketball for me did that. And so I just sit there and watch him. I just hope I can do the same thing for both of them right now. And as I said, it just, it makes you feel like you're playing for another reason other than yourself.